So our next caller, Chris from Colorado, wants to talk even more about aliens. Ooh, man, so many aliens tonight. So many aliens. Chris. <laughs> hey. Tell us what you got. Chris. How's it going? Hi, Susan. Hi. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, I wanted to call in, talk about aliens. Uh, I missed it the last time you guys talked about aliens. I, I was just on the line and then the show ended. But there, um, I guess there's a, a lot of definitions of alien. Of course, we're going with the extraterrestrial, right? Not the law. And um, yeah, space aliens. Yeah, yeah, space aliens. Um, I'm inclined to believe that they exist, um, just not in the way that uh, I guess the common, um, you know, like sci-fi movie depiction um, explains. Okay. So um, when you say that, do you mean they exist, but they don't travel here or they exist? And when they travel here, it doesn't look anything like what Steven Spielberg suggests. Yeah. So you, you say travel here and I don't think that they travel. Um, let's see. So like uh, not, not an extraterrestrial intelligence type of extraterrestrial, but an extraterrestrial in the sense that um, life form which does not originate on Earth. Okay. You're saying not intelligent, so like bacteria? Yeah, well, uh, I guess, yeah, we can start with bacteria um, or like microbes or things of that nature. Um, you know, like just in a form of where it's not like a intelligent type of like communicative type of of uh, life form. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. It could have floated in on some sort of particle from some hmm. kind of rock mm -hmm. asteroid something. Yeah, it just landed yeah. here, and I, I'm up with that. That's okay. I could I could go with that. But, you know, how do we know? How do we know once the asteroid hits Earth and they find it somehow that it wasn't created on Earth and it's not from Earth origin? Because all material, I believe, in the universe is all, I mean, there's no, nothing new. I mean, how do I say this? The laws of, the laws of nature are the laws of nature everywhere. That's I understand. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, no doubt for sure. Um, what I was, I guess, to make it a little bit more clear, whatever happened on Earth that on life, whether you know you're abiogenesis or, or a panspermia or whatever, um, happened somewhere else or is happening somewhere else as we speak. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And. That is a hypothesis that's at least, you know, actively being pursued. It's not, uh, it may not be the mainstream view of how life emerged on Earth, but it's one of the candidates that we can't discount. And there's at least enough reasons to investigate it. Um, I mean, they'll point to things like, hey, it seems like uh, certain bacteria and especially certain tiny creatures like, uh, uh, not troglobites, uh, uh, oh gosh, the little water bear. I'm forgetting the scientific name for it. Tardigrade. Tardigrades, yes. That they seem to be strangely hardy to things like heat, cold, and radiation in ways that you might think, what do you need for that? So if you're going to live on the surface of the earth, but if you were having to travel through empty space and have to handle the, you know, the cold, dark, uh, radiation-filled vacuum for thousands of years, it's like, oh, okay, maybe it could explain things like that. So it's at least a hypothesis we can pursue. If our uh, biology folks on the line were here, they could probably say other things about that. But I would imagine if microbes from another part of the galaxy were showing up, there are things we could look for to say, oh, they're not of this world. Because one is, we can't be sure, would life that emerged independently of Earth have DNA? That's one possibility. And if we find creatures that don't use DNA, if they use some completely different molecule, that would immediately say, hey, they have a completely different origin than the rest of life. 
Uh, but maybe it's the case that even DNA is nearly universal for biology. Maybe it's just far and away the best molecule for doing that stuff. But even so, uh, it's going to have a completely different evolutionary history. So you might look and say, hey, uh, its arrangement doesn't fit into any of the other uh, trees of life that we have for the rest of our life forms. We can't say, oh, it's got like, you know, this much in common with these other bacteria or these other uh, eukaryotes. It's like, hey, its structure is completely different. It still has the ability to um, process oxygen, but doesn't have a mitochondria. There, there are things I could imagine a good biologist could look for and say, uh, that's weird. But uh, as of right now, no one has successfully found examples of that, to the best of my knowledge. Right. And how, um, I guess since we're on the topic of belief, how do you believe that life originated on the planet? What 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 does the facts uh, point to uh, more on this planet? Again, this is outside of my expertise, so I'm just going to say the very weird things that I can try to pretend I know about. My understanding is this: is that the leading hypotheses are that um, the early Earth could allow for chemistry that can become more and more complex over time. There are studies that even suggest that certain types of molecules can even have uh, a selection factor, so like an early form of natural selection even existing at the molecular level before you get to the first reproducing cell. Um, one of the major hypotheses out there as well is what's called the RNA world hypothesis, where RNA, like as a, it's very similar to DNA in that it can encode genetic information, but unlike DNA, it can also like process and like make proteins and things like that. So it can actually do more functions than DNA. And one of the things it seems like is that uh, it can actually form spontaneously in environments that we think would have been representative of the early earth. So uh, my understanding is that there's evidence to believe that those sorts of things could arise naturally and through uh, a lot of chemistry and selective pressures, it can actually lead to the first kinds of life. But it's still an open question of what are all the steps? How much do we know things? What's still hypothesis versus what we have a good handle on? And I do not have the expertise to speak to that. Right. And that inclines me to believe, that's why I'm more inclined to believe that there is extraterrestrial life out there, because we know that there's early Earth out there, even right now. So, I mean, if it can happen here, and, and I know that's a fallacy. Don't worry, I've been through them all. <laughs> but if it can happen here, why not mm -hmm. elsewhere in the universe? You're 100% right. Mm -hmm. It's why I don't discount it. I'm just waiting to find the direct evidence to say, oh, yep, we found it. Uh, I, I, I would love to find that out. That would be so amazing, and I'm so totally open for it. Um, I would say, though, that we might have better luck uh, finding that evidence of the possibility of life in other worlds if we do a bit of exploring rather than here on Earth, if we go digging out into the solar system. So especially I'm thinking places like uh, the icy moon of Europa, because we know that moon of Jupiter has a gigantic ocean underneath its ice, and it has more water than all the surface water on the Earth. Is there something swimming in there? It's an active, it's a possibility. And if we go down there and we find life actually emerged there, then the probability that life exists elsewhere in the universe just skyrockets. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Yeah, we just got to fund a lot more to NASA uh, to make that even begin to be a possibility. A so, penny uh, for NASA, all your senator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you said it right. Uh, you know, we got to figure it out for sure, like um, you know, definitively. But I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm I'm atheist, so I'm more along the lines of the abiogenesis, but I, it always hit me as to, well, if it can happen here, why not anywhere else? Uh, 
I would say that, yeah, um, totally plausible. It's just a matter of how many worlds like Earth exist out there that can have the test tubes to uh, mix all the chemicals up to do that. And that's one of the things that we are currently exploring and probing because uh, we now have the technology to actually find Earth-like worlds. And we have found lots of possible candidates for that kind of thing, where there are worlds that are like around the same size as the Earth in what's called the habitable zone of other stars. And we actually now have statistical data to back up and say, yeah, there are worlds out there like that. But are there enough out there that are close enough to Earth to actually produce the sorts of chemical soups that we think our early Earth had? And that's still an open question. So um, fun NASA, hug an astronomer, do the things that need to be done to make the science happen. <laughs> yeah. And, and, oh, shoot, here's a good one. This this leads me to, to okay, well, um, you know, if you just fast forward a couple million years or, or a billion years or whatnot, put them on the other side of the universe, maybe they could be intelligent, just never able to communicate with us. But that's another thing. You know, that's imaginary stuff. But, you know. Well, honestly, it's uh, if aliens exist in the Milky Way galaxy, they're more likely to be uh, far away than close because galaxy is huge the probability of them being um, close in the sense of close that we could actually have a two-way conversation in a human lifetime is absurdly small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was, um, that's about it. I appreciate you for engaging me there. I really wanted to hear what Susan had to think about what I was saying there. That's, not the big, you know, gray aliens with the almond eyes or whatever, but the microbes, you know what I mean? Sure. I don't have a problem. I, I, if somebody told me that they were here, I wouldn't be shocked. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my area. Bring on the aliens. We want to talk. <laughs> Okay, right, thank you so right. much, Chris. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Thank you. You too. Thank, thank you, you, Chris. So much. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Hey there, everyone. We want you to check out our live show six days a week, six shows a week, five days a week, six shows. And also there are other channels coming and this part is meaningless, but you could support this channel by watching the live shows, by checking out another episode, tell the algorithm you want to stay here. You're not going to go off to some video of some super rich guy committing war crimes. You're going to stick around here and maybe you'll leave a comment or what else could they do, Eve? They could head over oh, to patreon.com slash call the line, right? Am I looking? That's, that's another I thing. And they the could right like, yeah. and they could subscribe. No, you got it right. I got it wrong the first time. And they could also comment. Yeah.